The Tavor 7, let's check it out. Israel became a nation again in 1948, and since that time they have been in constant conflict. Uh, they have borrowed firearms from all over the world and acquired firearms for the IDF. Uh, but one thing that was very important to Israel was to have their own manufacturing for their small arms. Uh, and that started out with the Uzi and also the Galil, the Negev, and a number of other different firearms. Since that time though, in 2001, Israel started developing the Tavor. This was the TAR-21. It was in 5.56. It served alongside with the M4 that the IDF was currently using. And then they updated it to the X95, also in 5.56. Now, in 2017, the IWI has developed the Tavor 7. And this is in 7.62 by 5.1 NATO or 308. Again, it's a really bullpup, very compact design, uh, very ergonomic, very battle proven. And I want to give a big thanks to IWI for sending the Tavor 7 for this test and evaluation. Now, IWI is the one that produces the Tavor, and that is the Israeli weapons industry. Uh, they changed in 2005 from IMI, or Israeli military industry. And IWI is a privatized company there in Israel. With the 308, it took them 16 years to develop the 308 or the 7.62 by 51 version of the Tavor. But there are a lot of similarities to the Tavor 7 with the X95. A lot of the controls, a lot of the things are the same. Uh, one of the big changes, though, is that it went from a long stroke piston system with the TAR21 and the X95. With the short recoil system in the Tavor 7, it definitely aids in felt recoil. And that's one of the biggest things about the Tavor 7 is how easy it shoots. The recoil is really mild. Now right up here is your mag release. We're going to drop the magazine. We're going to check to make sure the gun is empty, and it is. And the Tavor 7 uses the SR25 pattern mags, which Magpul makes those mags. And they make them all the way from 5 up to 30 round magazines, which makes it nice. But the steel magazines will work in here, but the caveat is they have to be U.S. made magazines to keep this 922R compliant. Of course, the magazines go right into the back of the rifle because all of your action is back here in the back of your rifle. And that's one of the things about a bullpup design is that all the, the hammer, everything is here in the rear. And that way you can make the barrel still long, but make it yet a very compact package. And it's one of the big appeals of the bullpup design. But one of the big problems with the bullpup design is you have your trigger here, but you actually have your hammer and sear back here. And so when you pull the trigger, you have linkages that go back to actuate the trigger. But with the Tavor, they have, this is really a smooth trigger for a bullpup, and we're going to look at that in a minute. Now, with the original Tavor series, I actually replaced my trigger pack with a Geisley because that trigger was atrocious. Uh, but with the new trigger, it was beautiful. With this, I don't know that I'm going to change it. It's really a great trigger. So, guys, we're going to check the trigger action. You have a little bit of take up right here. And then a really nice break. Uh, it's not super crisp, but it's not bad at all. I mean, it is a decent trigger. Reset right there. Check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brown Ales. Three pounds, 10.9 ounces. Four pounds, 0.7 ounces. 
Now I went ahead and removed the scope. We're using one of the primary arms ACSS 1 to 6 optics. These are fantastic and I uh, just wanted to let you know because I wanted to see a little bit better the rifle itself, how it comes. Here we have the AR-10. This is the Air Precision M5A3 N308 and you can see with the stock out, I mean it is a considerably larger rifle. So this really makes it a very compact package and yet they both have 16 inch barrels. So there's a real big appeal for the bullpup design, especially with military applications. It's just a smaller package. You've got your grip here. This can be removed. You can put different panels in here, but it does have a guard right here at the front. So your trigger guard is really large, but it just fits right into your hand like this. Right here is your mag release like we've shown, and then you have an ambidextrous safety. Uh, it is a 45 degree angle instead of the original 90. And so that doesn't really interfere with your hand, uh, but it's abbreviated on one side, and yet for right-handed shooters, it's larger, so you can get a hold of it. This gun is actually fully ambidextrous. Uh, you can change things out. You can change even the way that it ejects. We're going to look at that in just a minute. The housing is a high-impact polymer. Uh, we do have a metal piece right here, and then we have the Picatinny rail section that goes all along the top. Now, on the earlier Tavor series, they did have sights that were embedded into the Picatinny rail, but those have been removed. So you can add any kind of adjustable sights or, of course, obviously an optic. Now, here we have one of the original Tavors. This is the TAR-21. Uh, it has a mag release back here, which is a little bit different. And, of course, the mag's empty. And this gun is unloaded as well. Uh, this is the original Tavor design. There are a few differences between this and the, the Tavor 7. Uh, the Tavor 7 is actually built more on the X95 line, which was an update to this original Tavor. Uh, but one of the things about this rifle is that it is a long stroke piston. Tavor 7, it's a short stroke piston. Now the weight on the Tavor 7 without the scope is 9 pounds and 12 ounces. The original Tavor is 8 pounds, 8 ounces. And the Air Precision AR-10 M5E1 is 8 pounds, 10 ounces without the scope, but it's considerably longer than the Tavor 7, even with the stock collapsed. Now, we are going to be doing a comparison with the Desert Tech MDR. Uh, this is in 308 as well. This is a really high quality rifle. I love this rifle. The price, though, is considerably higher than your standard Tavor 7. And so we're going to take it out and just do a full review and compare both of them. And I think these are very comparable rifles. Another big thing that the Tavor 7 to me has going for it is it is designed for military use. Your charging handles right here, it is non-reciprocating. Uh, and you can actually lock it into place just like with your HK. Uh, now, if the magazine's empty, of course, even when you drop it, it's going to stay in this position. But if you drop the bolt, it goes home but it is again non-reciprocating. The bolt release is right here toward the back. You hit it and it just goes forward. And there's no pad on the buttstock. Uh, this honestly is a lot to do with just the less felt recoil. You don't really need it. There are QD sockets here with a small little loop for an attachment and then you have a QD point at the back. And here on the other side, it's mirrored. Same thing. The barrel is 16 inches. It actually comes all the way back here to the chamber. Uh, and it is cold hammer forged and it is chrome lined. Uh, it is 1 in 12 twist, which we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, and then, of course, you have your muzzle brake right here, which is very effective. And the thread pitch is 5H by 28. Guys, when it comes to 1 in 12 twist, it really handles lighter weight 308 bullets better. Uh, 150 grain and below. And that's really what this rifle was designed for. When you get up into the higher 167, 168 grain, uh, 180 grain, you know, it's not going to stabilize quite like a 1 in 10 twist. It's so one of the things to consider about this rifle. You're going to get much better accuracy with the lighter weight bullets. Now it has M-lock slots here and on the other side, and then we have your hand guard right here that is removable. And you just push down and then pull your rail cover out, and that way you have Picatinny rail right here. Now this is polymer, then you just fit this right back over it. And you have this little hand stop right here to keep your hand from going forward. This is an adjustable gas system. It starts out with R for regular, A for adverse, S for suppressor, and O for off. And there's a hole right here that you can actually take and turn this and adjust it to whatever desired gas position you want. Very easy. I want to thank Fioki USA for sponsoring the ammo. We're shooting some 180 grain match king to kind of get things started.
Yes, we are. The, one of the first things we noticed with the DeVore 7 was the recoil was more like a 556. Wow. I'm impressed. It feels more like you're shooting a 556. That's a, that is amazing. <clears throat> or maybe even a 7.62 by 3.9. It was very mild for 308 caliber. In fact, I gave it to my daughter to shoot, and when she finished, she said this was like shooting an AR-15. I mean, the recoil is just very manageable. A lot of that has to do with the weight of the rifle and the way it's balanced, but also with their muzzle brake. Uh, and it just seems to really tame the recoil. And of course, using the standard P-Mags is also a huge bonus. And, you know, the rifle itself, it takes a little bit of time getting used to, but if you're, especially if you're used to the AR-15 or the AK-47, but there's a lot of similarities to the AR, just a few differences. And it doesn't take long to get up to speed. But what's really great is just how compact it is. Now, we didn't have any kind of malfunctions with the rifle, uh, which was expected. Uh, these just run like tops. They'll take a number of different type ammunitions. In 308, there are so many different choices out on the market. Now, we sighted in our scope at 50 yards. We didn't get a chance to really test it out at 100. But from all the reports I've seen, guys, it's pretty much consistent that it's about a minute and a half out. And so, which, you know, if you're really looking for something very precision, this is probably not the rifle. Now, they do make it again in the 20-inch version, which should be a little more accurate. but we were hitting steel targets from 100, 200, and 300 yards with ease. Now I'm gonna go through the disassembly process. It's really pretty simple. And you can do every bit of it with the tip of a 308 bullet. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and bring back, make sure that we are empty. We're gonna let it go home. Now right here at your bolt release, this is also the trigger pack. And there are two pins right here. You can just take your bullet, pop it through. Here on the other side, we'll just pull them through. They are retained, so they'll stay in place. Just make sure they're popped fully out. Then we're gonna bring down the cover and then your trigger pack comes right out. Then there's a pin right here, we're gonna push it through, and again, pull out the pin, and then this releases your butt plate. And as you can see, it is a thin plastic butt plate. And then we'll just remove the bolt and the recoil spring, it all comes out. And guys, to be honest with you, that's all you need to do to field strip. But let's say you're a left-handed shooter and you wanna switch things out. Right here, there's an arrow pointing on this pin, just go ahead and push it out. And then again, pull out your pin and it is retained. And then we're gonna drop our firing pin and it comes right out. And then right here, you'll notice that it says R and then there's an L. Wherever it's pointing and it says R to this little notch, that means that this is for right-handed. So we're gonna pull this little pin out and I'm gonna move my bolt just a little bit to get it to pop out. There we go, pulls right out. And now we can pull the bolt right out. You have your extractor claw here and you have your ejector and what we can do is is turn that around to the other side to where the ejector claw is facing the left hand of the gun so with that in mind we're going to slide it back into the bolt and when we see the hole when it comes through and where the l is on the pin we're going to place it into the hole of the bolt and here you can see that the l is with the notch and guys, this will only fit one way into the bolt. If the bolt is turned the wrong way, it won't fit. Now return your firing pin, and then just take this little pin and close it up. So now your bolt is changed to the left-hand configuration. Take your charging handle, put it between these two hash marks, and there's a little pin or a detent down at the bottom of the handle. You push it in with a 308 tip, 
and then we're just going to lift it up just like that and then you can just pull it right out now this lever is in the up position we're just going to bring it forward and it pops down now take your charging handle and just pop it over and it locks into place just to make sure it's set now here with the ejection port just pull up on the brass deflector and bring it forward and then you can turn it and lock it into place right there and that closes off this side then here on the other side just do the opposite just pull up bring it down turn it around and just lock it into place then we just return our bolt close the butt plate Pop our pin back into place. Now take your bolt release cover, lift it up, and then we're just gonna drop the trigger in, close it up, and then depress your pins. So guys, now you have it in the left-hand configuration, and of course, we're gonna switch it back, but you see how easy it is to do. And guys, now it's back in the right-hand configuration. This is so much more simple to do than the original Tavor, and so this really makes this a fully ambidextrous rifle just using the bullet tip of your 308. Now the MSRP on the Tavor 7 is $2,099. Um, I started doing some research and the price, market price is around $1,800, which is really excellent for this type rifle. Uh, and just with all the different quality that goes into these. Now, as far as some pros and cons of the Tavor 7, number one, it is a super compact 308 rifle, but it, yet it's a full rifle. Uh, much shorter than your AR-10 and even a lot of the AR pistols that are out on the market. And so that really is a big plus. Uh, the recoil management is just surprising. I mean, it really shoots well, shoots flat. Another thing with the ambidextrous controls, everything can be switched over fairly easily, which also is a big appeal, especially for those left-handed shooters. Uh, there's a lot of features on this rifle, the full monolithic Picatinny rail, uh, you know, the removable cover. It doesn't take long to adapt to the manual of arms with the DeVore 7 if you're used to shooting AR-15s. And so there's a lot of bonuses, plus with using the P-Mags, which makes it really nice. I mean, there's so many different mag choices out there. Uh, as far as the cons go, it is a little bit heavy, at which is expected. All the balance is, though, toward the back, so it belies the weight when you're shooting it. But when you're carrying it, it's definitely heavy. Uh, and then, of course, with the accuracy, um, I would like to see a little tighter accuracy because I like to shoot accurately. Uh, but as far as for a combat rifle, this would is very acceptable. Again, we had no problems hitting man-sized targets consistently at the 300 yards. And so I feel like that, you know, if you're looking for a great 308 in a small, tight package, the price is definitely right. For around the $1,800 range, you can get a bullpup, state-of-the-art rifle, and uh, that it has a lot of these features you're not going to get anywhere else. And yet, you're not losing anything with the quality of the Tavor 7. And again, guys, I want to thank IWI for sending the Tavor 7 for this test and evaluation. Guys, if you're looking for a 308 in a really compact package that's built like a tank, this is definitely one to go with. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. I want to thank Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, we're shooting some, what are we shooting? 180 grains match king. Oh good. Then we just return our bolt. <laughs> Ha 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 ha.
Robbie, get your ears in. Go man. ahead, I'm fine. 